welcome to Interactive Podcasting. In this podcast, Mr. Alistair Pace will take a bedside teaching session telling us how to examine the elbow joint using the look-feel-move approach. We hope that you enjoy it. Hello, Peter. Alistair here. Hi there. Um, do you mind if I examine your elbow there? No, that's fine. So, um, I'm going to examine Peter's right elbow there. I have washed my hands. So, um, we'll, we'll start by um, asking patients to um, just to demonstrate his elbows for us. Can you just bring your elbows by the side now? So what I'm looking at is I'm comparing both sides and I'm looking for any what we call cubitus valgus or cubitus varus deformity, and which essentially means um, any deformities um, in the um, coronal plane. Um, and if we look at the right and left elbow, uh, there's no deformities when compared uh, to each other. Looking uh, from the um, from the side of the right elbow, um, I'm looking for um, any deformities in this in this um, plane, and again the elbow is nice and straight. There are no scars or swellings um, visible. Um, coming towards the back here, yeah, you just turn around towards the camera for me. Uh, I'm looking at the elbow from the back, and again I'm looking for any scars or swellings, any ceramic patches visible. It's always important to look at the medial side of the elbow as well because you can miss scars, for example, after the other nerve decompressions and there are no scars or, or deformities or swellings visible here. Okay, so you look towards the camera now for me. The next part of the, um, uh, of the demonstration will, will involve um, palpation and um, the number of structures around the elbow which need to be palpated and which can give rise to different pathologies. So if we start from the medial side of the elbow, and the most prominent part of the elbow is the medial condyle here, and this can be tender in um, conditions like um, golfer's elbow, where you get inflammation of the uh, flexor common origin here. So I'm, I'm looking at the patient, seeing there's any tenderness there, so is that painful at all? That is fine. And coming round behind the medial condyle, um, one would palpate the ulnar nerve. You don't see there's any tenderness there, or whether the ulnar nerve tends to sublux forward or backwards. Um, going to the olecranon at the back here, the quiet tenderness here, and coming uh, laterally towards the uh, lateral epicondyle, again testing for any tenderness here. And if this was tender, that may be indicative of uh, what we call a tennis elbow or lateral condylitis. And coming towards the side here, one would come to what we call the radio capitellar joint and uh, this can be tender and painful in some patients. Um, coming towards the front of the elbow, one would palpate uh, the biceps tendon um, in front here and this can be tender in conditions like bicepital uh, tendonitis. Uh, the next stage of, um, of uh, examining the elbow would be the movements and there are basically uh, four movements flexion, extension, pronation, supination. And the best way of examining uh, a flexion extension is to bring the elbows by the side like that. So you demonstrate to the patient um, whether they can bring the elbows by the side and you ask them to fully extend the elbows and that would give you an idea of whether there's a flexion deformity in the elbows. But if the patient couldn't extend the elbow and you could only get it to that amount, then there would be a flexion uh, uh, deformity uh, of about 20 degrees there. But in Peter's case, obviously, this is normal, he has full extension. The flexion is, is asked, the, the flexion is achieved asking the patient to bend his elbows as far as he can, and then you have a full range of flexion in this patient's case. So the range of movement here would be zero to about 160 degrees, and they're equal on both sides. Now, to test pronation supination, it's important that we ask the patient to tuck his elbows by the side like that. So you could add to that for me, please, Peter. And uh, asking the patient to perform a thumbs up sign, and that's going to give us an idea of the angles we're going to achieve by rotating the elbows. So supination is, is, a, is a position of the palm facing upwards. So the patient's got full supination there, and that can be measured by this angle, which is about 90 degrees. And you come back to neutral again, and rotate the thumbs inwards, and that's pronation. And again, that's full in Peter's case. So in the final part of the demonstration of the elbow, we're going to talk about two common pathologies. 
uh, seeding clinic. Um, one of them is Tenacelvo, and the other one is Gorfacelvo. Both are entosopathies, um, and they present pain uh, in, in, in the case of uh, Tenacelvo on the outside of the elbow, and in um, Gorfacelvo on the inside of the elbow. And usually patients have pain when lifting something or rotating a knob, etc. So look at Peter's elbow here. Uh, in the case of tennis elbow, or what we call lateral epicondylitis, uh, the pain is usually situated in this area here. And in this area is where the, um, uh, the, ten the extensor muscles are inserted. And if one had to um, resist the contraction of these muscles, um, one would get pain in that area around where they insert. So we asked Peter here to um, lift his wrist against resistance against my hand there, and the pain would usually be situated around this here, the wards and tennis elbow. Similarly, if, there was, uh, if, was, if Peter had evidence of the um, golfer's elbow, he'd complain of pain in that area, and this is where the, uh, the, the long flexes of the forearm and wrist um, are, are, are attached there, and we had to resist the contraction of those flexor muscles uh, uh, against resistance. Then Peter was complaining of pain around the medial corner here. So we asked Peter here to, to bend his wrist against my hand here, and that contracts the muscles there, and Peter was complaining of pain in that area over there, if he did have some cold example. Thanks very much for tuning in to this podcast. If you've enjoyed this, more content can be found at interactivepodcasting.com. Alternatively, to get all of our content, subscribe to the Med School podcast in iTunes. Thanks and goodbye.